Hello, what's up YouTube? In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can easily understand skin retouching using frequent separation in less than 7 minutes. So, we are just going to be using less than 7 minutes to understand frequent separation from the very start to the very end. And also how you can easily attain natural and highly realistic skin texture after doing skin retouching using frequent separation in these 7 minutes. So, let's just get started. And what you have to understand about, about frequent separation it is a skin retouching technique that divides the image into the textures and the colors. So when we work on the textures independent of the colors, and at the end of the retouching process, we combine both layers, we end up with a very nice and good-looking image that has been edited and retouched within Photoshop using frequency separation. So just when come the background and make sure it is selected and hit Ctrl or Command J twice. So make sure it is selected and hit Ctrl or Command J twice. Or you can easily drag and drop here to create those two layers. Just going to delete one of those layers. And I'm going to double click here and I'm going to name this to low. And I'm going to name this to high. Like I said, the low frequency layer contains the colors and the skin tones. And the high frequency layer contains the outlines and the skin textures or the details of the image. So you're just going to come and deactivate the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer. And after selecting it, we're just going to come right here to filter. Come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. Like this layer says, it is low frequency, meaning it only has to have colors of the image or the skin tones. So in order to retain the colors like we have here, so whenever you see low, just make sure it is colors. So with this dialog box open for us, we can use the zoom tool by simply left clicking on it. And now just zoom in and look for area that has more skin textures than the rest of the skin. So this area is going to be the reference. So I'm just going to left click on this slider and move it right towards the right hand side, just like that. So you have to move it up to a point when you're just starting to lose out on the textures. Meaning the textures we lose out here are going to be the textures that we are going to be having in our final retouched image. So just move it just like that. So I feel like at around 7. So this radius may be different from how many details or how much of the information or how much texture you have in your photo. So you shouldn't cram this digit right here. Just come and hit OK. And after doing that, it's going to apply the blur effect onto the overall image and it's going to look a little bit blurry. So I just going to come to the high frequency line and select it and now activate it by clicking on the visibility icon right here. Then we are going to come to image and come down to apply image. So in come to apply image, I'm just going to reset this. So in come to apply image, you have we have apply image so you have to come and select the low frequency layer from which we are going to be subtracting our textures or our details from the low frequency layer so just come to layer and select the low frequency layer the channel has to be rgb so if at all you have eight right here it means you're going to be having an eight bit image so this is going to be different from one image to another so right now we have 16 so i'm going to be showing that in a bit right now so if at all you have 16 meaning the image is going to be 16 make sure the image bit depth is going to be 16. Make sure the blending mode has to be add. Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The opacity is at 100%. Make sure the scale is 2 and offset 0. And make sure you turn on the invert option. And with the preview option also turned on, you can see that we have the textures or the outlines on this gray kind of layer. And if at all you have an 8-bit image, so meaning if at all you have 8 right here, you have to come and make sure you select the low frequency layer. And now come to the blend mode and change it to subtract. The opacity has to be 100. The preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale has to be 2 and offset 128. Make sure invert is not checked in this case. And make sure the preview option is on and you can see we have the same results. But if at all I have a 16-bit image like I have right here, make sure the blend mode has to be add. Opacity at 100. Scale is 2, offset 0. Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The invert option is going to be turned on and just hit OK. I now just want to reveal back the information in the image. Come the blend mode and change it from a normal and change it down to linear light. And you're going to be having the image back. So I'm just going to left click and select both layers and hit Ctrl Command G on the keyboard group them. So you can see there is no difference between our separated image and the original background image. So click on the drop down and select the low frequency layer. And after selecting it, just come the brushes, simply right click and get what you know as the Mr. Brush tool. Right click and get the Mr. Brush tool. For other versions of Photoshop, you may find your Mr. Brush tool below here. So you have to set it 
in order to blend the skin tones. Remember, we, uh, we have selected the layer that is containing the colors or skin tones, and we just want to work on those first as we are retouching. So make sure the hardness is at 0%, and make sure it is a clean brush. Select the second option, which says clean the brush after each and every stroke, meaning Photoshop is automatically going to clean the brush for us as we are trying to retouch or clean or blend the skin color. So make sure the weight is 9, load 75, miss at 90 and the flat 100%. Make sure sample all layers is not ticked or checked because we only want to work with the information in the color layer or the low frequency layer. And after doing that, you can now zoom in and come to the high frequency layer and just turn it off and just start painting colors that are looking alike. So we're just trying to harmonize and how to do this, left click and hold down and move your cursor just like that. Or you can move your mouse or whichever you whichever tool you're trying to use to retouch or blend the skin. So you can notice that the image is looking a little bit plastic, but that reason is uh, it is because we turned off the texture layer. So at the end of it all, when you turn it back on, you're going to be seeing the textures coming back. So let's just come and blend these colors. So reduce on the size by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard. So as you're seeing, I'm trying to blend colors that are looking alike in this photo. So increase on the size depending on how big the area you're trying to blend is. So just come and paint just like that. And you can see the image is now, the colors are just looking, uh, they're just harmonized or they're in harmony. So just going to come and paint in those colors. And I hope you can see and understand this concept quite well and better. So you have to work on everything, but I'm just trying to rush through and show you how it is done in just seven minutes. So just come and turn it, turn back the texture layer on and you can see a before and after. And I forgot to tell you, in order to zoom in, you can use Control Command Plus on the keyboard. Zooming out is Control Minus. And with the low frequency layer still selected, just come and get the lasso tool. Make sure the new selection mode is active and the feather is 22 pixels because we don't want a rough edge selection when you're trying to select on the skin. So I tend to use the lasso tool method after using or blending the skin using a Mr. Brush tool because this tends to fine tune the areas that I may have missed out when I was using a Mr. Brush tool. So come and make a selection on the skin area. So you have to keep away from the edges of the face or even the hair and eyebrows. And after selecting that, come back to filter blind, come back to gush and blur. And this point is where you have to fine tune the details within the skin. So you have to move the radius up to the point when you feel like you're getting a very nice texture in the image and at around 21 we are good to go so or alternatively i can share a trick usually we had the, we had initially a radius of seven so just multiply that radius that you had in whichever case in your frequency separation workflow when you're dividing the frequencies of the image so multiply that radius by three and that just type in the value so seven by three is 21 and i'm just going to type in that and hit okay so i'm just going to apply it onto the rest of the areas so make a selection according to the shape of the area and you can see it is just fine tuning the areas we may have missed out when we are using the mixer brush to blend or even out the transitions within uh, the skin tones of the image. You can see that. So when it comes to the nose area, just apply it on the sides of the nose and you can ignore the highlight. So when it comes to the highlight, only use the mixer brush tool on the highlight areas and you can see it is just fine tuning the image. Right click and come to Gaussian Blur. And you can see the image now looks great. And you can see right now the before and after, before, after. So after retouching the image, you can just come and clean up the image by removing the blemishes, which are part of the high frequency. Just come to the high frequency layer and select it. And come and get whichever tool that you want. I would recommend the clone sub tool. Right click and get your clone sub tool. The mode is no more opacity and the flat 100%. The hardness, I'm going to be using a hardness of 50%. And the sample has to be current layer because we only want to work on the layer that contains the details which is the high frequency layer you can now zoom in and in order to remove the blemishes you can come and simply hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and left click to sample close the blemish and simply left click on the blemish to get rid of it so alt left click to copy and left click release the alternate and left click to paste over the blemish to clean it so basically you have to take your time while cleaning up the image or you can do this step at or before applying your frequency separation process. So I'd recommend that you do this usually 
after because the mixer brush tool is going to flatten out most of the blemishes in your image and you have less work to do when it comes to cleaning up or removing the blemishes so this is how to understand frequency separation from the very start to the very end and if at all you have loved this don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed this channel Ronix from Ronix Photography thank you for watching and see you in yet more amazing tutorials don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating